I'd like to invite Jason and Paula up on stage for a little bit of a chat here. This came right on up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Good to see you again. Thank you, sir. So, as we talked, is it still okay? Absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you so much for being here. Before we sort of get started, and first thing off, I would like. There's a lot of we got a lot of great compliments, and we appreciate your time and your patience and, and working with us and being here and enjoying the conference. But one thing I wanted to do is is just recognize our staff who's worked so hard for the past year, who's been a big part of making this come to life today. And so all my Z first, if you're a Z Prime staffer, if you can raise your hands and kind of come up to the front, just stand right over here, front. over here. Come on, Ricky. <laughs> David Francis, if you worked closely with the team, Tara, I know you're better there in the back. Please come up to the front. And I'd also like to invite Chris, Chris Justice and his team. I'd like to invite Dan and his team. Chris Justice ran a registration. We also had some of the hotel staff who was uh, ran by Dan Padilla. And even our photographer, guys, so much people have put so much time and effort into this. And also our event staff, where is Audrey and, and her team? They're the ones who actually made it come to life. I've got a lot of great compliments, and I appreciate it. But honestly, these guys did all the work. Like, this doesn't happen without their belief in what you guys are advocating for, without our partners and sponsors, and us you know, challenging each other. We're a real-life living example of how you change and bring something to life and try something different. And it could not happen with this group here and lots of partners and suppliers. Yes, there's lots of frustration, <laughs> lots of laughter too. But at the end of the day, this team, they make it happen. And I know all of you probably are, runs your own type of events and do different things. And so all of you can probably relate to how hard it is to do this. And, and for me to see it come to life, and all the pats in the back, it's great, but honestly, it, it all, it's all falls to them, from our sales team, our marketing team, and then our events team who brings it to life over the past four days. And in the spirit of a lot of what Paula believes in and where this industry is going, I wanted to take the time to recognize all of them. And if you could just give them a round of applause. Um, you know, I work with some other um, organizations, and every once in a while you're in a group with a bunch of high-profile, very intellectual people, and they'll say things like, we should do an event and have a talk and put it on and bring in hundreds of people. And um, I always look at the, uh, the cringe from the, from the team that's like, that sounds awesome, <laughs> but it is so much Work. So I'm always an advocate for the team that puts it together, the ETS team, uh, the Z Prime team. I mean, they work all year long to build up uh, the connections across the industry and to make this event bring all the ideas in. So I'm, I'm appreciative of you, Jason, and your leadership and, and all the team members of Z Prime. And this was a fabulous event again. Thank you. Thank you. And we also work closely with a lot of your staff, too. So there's a lot of... Uh, our partners and sponsors here who we get lots of emails, lots of phone calls and prep calls. So all of you that are out there, I think you can appreciate the amount of work. And uh, we try to duplicate that across all our partners and sponsors. And we couldn't do that just with being flexible in schedules, trying to round up four executives for a prep call. It probably <laughs> takes about 15 or 20 people to get the schedule right. And, meerkats. Uh, yes. That's what yeah. I call meerkats. Uh, so that in itself is, is a game changer, I think, that, that we can pull this off and got the event to where it's at. But, but now let's talk about okay. the game-changing things that you're seeing over the past few days. Now you're involved in a lot of different organizations, both that I know you're the Fed board there, and you recently got appointed to a Smart Cities Council board uh, and doing some regional readiness. 
So amongst that myriad of things you're seeing, tell us what's next either in energy or infrastructure, or what are you seeing? What's this next game-changing things that we need to be looking out for? You know, far out, it, it's, um, it's interesting. Far out, I think, we, we know, right? We know that it's uh, trying to find the right level of energy storage to optimize renewables and lead the pathway to other stuff that we don't know. Right? Yeah. Um, but the, the electrification aspect of really trying to decarbonize our lives, I think right now for what we see is the brass ring yeah. uh, from that perspective. But um, I think that you know, I woke up this morning and you know I'm going getting dressed and everything, and my husband and I are always listening to the news and we hey. we watch Eddie. Hey, half Eddie, yeah. We watch, <laughs> and so this morning there was a story about. Uh, NASA working on a shuttle to go to venture into the atmosphere of the sun. And, okay, for the life of me, I'm trying to figure out why would I want to get that close to that much intensity, right? Um, and, I, and, and I'm um, also thinking, what is the material that allows a spaceship to fly all that distance and be able to handle the intensity of the sun? I can't imagine it. Um, and I'm, and I'm trying to figure out where, where the value proposition is. One of the scientists got up though and said something profound. It was something to the effect of, we've been thinking about this for five years, um, but we finally, technology is finally caught up with the concept. And now we are so close, we, we project that we will in fact send that into orbit in the foreseeable future, I think within the next year. And um, you know, we were talking this morning, that's what's happening. Um, in our industry, we can fathom that life can be different and we can fathom that energy can be, be provided differently and that we have all of these new things that we can do. But in reality, we're kind of waiting for technology to truly catch up and make it so that it works. We are still business people. Um, the whole thing about um, use cases, which when I first started hearing use cases, I thought, oh my God, here we go, another catchphrase. Uh, but, the, but the practicality of it is we've got to get to the point where we apply these solutions, but in many ways you can't catch them on the shelf or you pick the wrong one, it's not right size. Um, there is a need for a whole lot more customization, thinking about what we've got to optimize where we want to go. And so right now we're, we, we have to realize that we are we could probably feel it more than we can actually tangibly put it together, um, but it is the it is the discussion, it is the the connection, it is the partnership. Um, I love the fact that people walked up to me and talked to me about all these different things that they are working on, and we need to be able to figure out how to partner to make these things really start to one step at a time. Great, great. that's great. Uh, so, sort of turning now to what you can touch on, and I think. Gil and their panel touched on is changing the culture, uh, being a big champion and voice for people and people first and starting there and then yeah, the technology will ca catch up. So from, from the changes you put in place for the past uh, two years there in your leadership role, what is some advice, some tactical advice we can give to the audience members? Like what can we do today to take that first step to get that game changing, either it's a, whether it's a culture in your culture and driving people can you give us some first step recommendations that they can walk away with and say, maybe we should try this? Um, yes. Um, you know, um, I sit back now and we're thinking, we're thinking about all these things and, and it's, there's this little undercurtain in, in our conversation about we don't have the right people. Um, that we've got to have data scientists and we've got to have all these people and skills that people don't currently have. And there's, you know, there's, it, I, I don't, mean to say that it was a super negative comment, but there's this thing about leap, leapfrogging existing talent to get to talent that is somewhere way outside of the industry that you've got to do. Um, and, but the real point is, yes, we've got to do that, but in reality, we've got to bring this whole industry along. Um, the conversation about whether or not you'll have less jobs because AI will make sure you, don't, you have less jobs. I think Gil was exactly right. I'm not sure we're gonna have less jobs. We're gonna have different jobs. Um, we're gonna have a transition where we move talent to other aspects of where people want value. Now, um, 
we act like right now that this is just some kind of insurmountable change paradigm and that, oh, oh my God, how, you know, how are we going to do it? And it's, it's amazing. As Christine started out 20 years ago, her car, she's still driving a car with a date, uh, a tape deck in it. Um, but you can't find a tape deck anywhere. Um, the transitions that have happened over the last 20 years uh, have, have been substantial. And change is, is not some new thing, it is the thing. Um, again, I quote my husband, um, resistance to change is futile. Change is inevitable. Yeah. Resistance to change is futile. Um, the great philosopher, Eddie Williams. Uh, <laughs> and that, you know, the funny thing is that, that quote was only meant for our children. Yeah. That, was, that was it, because they were always resisting. Um, but, but, you know, culturally, um, trying to get people to not think about, uh, uh, you know, locking in. The problem in our industry is people have been able to lock in. They've been able to, to grow extremely deep roots and be the best operators or the best um, call center professionals. And they know everything about everything and they have this institutional knowledge that was huge. And whether or not they were able to transition that, that institutional knowledge to you or someone else, there was always the question, how do you get people to get that out of their head? Um, we, again, spend a lot of time looking at people and say, you may be really, really great, and you may have done something for 20, 25 years. We need you to have all of that essence of what you do. We need you to, to be that, have that as a foundation for your expertise, and customers need to know that when you're talking to them, you have requisite foundational knowledge that makes you an expert in the space. However, you have just started to learn you have just started to venture into the next aspect of your career. Um, we are telling everybody, break your paradigm. You need to go into heavy learning mode, no matter how smart you are, no matter where, what level of the organization you are. And we're telling people, you may have been technical, and now we need you to be in design thinking. Um, design thinking people need technical people to explain to them how things have worked, so we can think about, well, that may be true, but that's not perfect. This, this whole thing of really having this collaborative thinking about solution generation and the aspect of it being organic um, only will happen when we actually let go of all the boxed in thinking that we've had. And so that cultural piece for every organization is huge, every industry is huge, um, very much trying to make sure that we don't um, at the, the previous panel, uh, uh, Doreen said, you don't think you figured it out already before you ever started. Yeah. Um, we have so many possibilities in this industry, but you gotta tell your people, let go, just let go. And, and that's how the organization is gonna move forward. Fantastic, so what I'll, I'll just add is, I had a real life example of, of that in practice. So about two years ago, when we first started engaging with Jonathan and his team, we were getting into our partnership. So you go into the meeting, and we're going to talk about, this was ETS 17, what we're going to do. And, and, and so I walk in, and it's me, and then here's Jonathan. I think Aaron Otan on my team was with me. And then here comes, his name is Julius, Julius Moore. He says, hey, I'm on, hey, Julius. Hey, Julius, he's on the, he's on the safety side. And so and in my head, I'm thinking, you know, this is safety, and we're going to talk marketing and messaging. And then, you know, then they told me the story, how they're in this rotational, uh, program and training, and then so Julius was actually involved on in all these prep calls, and, and when I'm having side conversations with Julius, he's like, wow, this is so interesting, I'm just learning, but I can see this new excitement in his face. And, and just to be able to do that in, in practice, and I've talked to several members of your team who are kind of going through that, and I've heard other great examples, like from SMUD, uh, if you guys ever heard Paul Louster, that's a great story of how he did his rotations and learned different sides of the business. Uh, just bring, bring how that breaks down mental barriers, uh, and that's hard for us because hard. we're a lot of. And no matter if it's a utility industry or a different one, we we try to get really good at what we're great and stay good at that and keep doing it. Uh, so I did want to share that because that was like for me when I saw that this isn't just someone who's talking. This is what we need. They're, they're doing it, uh, and that in itself is game changing. And I'm sure there's several stories out here where you guys are are doing that as well. Uh, so just. Just one more, more, one more question. So, so we're here in in Austin, 
you're in San Antonio, and I see Jackie from Austin Energy. Hey, Jackie. And uh, we were talking about uh, really creating new partnerships and new ways of doing partnerships. And I understand some of the other executives got together uh, to be able to brainstorm and talk big ideas. Uh, what are some of the ideas that you guys, you might be thinking that we could do here in Central Texas, awesome. or maybe apply that into different regions of the US. Well, share. you just uh, used a couple of terms that I actually believe in, um, but, I'll, but I'll give context. So um, we're in a global um, industry. Uh, I actually had the, the benefit of going to Germany um, recently, and I met my counterpart that was um, running the energy company, and um, uh, her, she, was, she was having the, Marie Wolf is her name, and uh, Antega is the name of the company. And she has the exact same challenges and opportunities that I have. It was just, you know, as she talked, I'm like, well, that's my everyday life. That's where, you know, where we're at. Um, that's, that's huge. And it's, it's important to be able to know that technological solutions are happening all over. I coupled that with, like, we also had um, a European co uh, company come in to talk to us about potentially joining our new energy economy. Our new energy economy is where we attract businesses to not just do business with us, but to become part of the fiber of the DNA of San Antonio. So we, we want people to bring um, offices and have employees based out of Texas and by far in San Antonio. The one thing they said to me was, you know, this municipal power thing, I mean, every, every structure can work, but they said this municipal power thing is really interesting for us because you directly deal with the city manager all the time. Um, you deal with the mayors, you deal with the council members. And so that connection you have, and we, in, in San Antonio, we have a partnership percolating um, realistically between our owner, the city of San Antonio, um, the water uh, utility, which is separate than, than the energy utility, um, the transportation um, agency. And um, we're really, really having, um, significant conversations about smart community and really thinking about it in our in our hub we're still going to look at the global solution sets we're still going to partner we're still going to do thought leadership but the importance of trying to bring it to where there's a a springing of ideas is important and then the ability to think about what i call regionalism um, what's really special about South Texas and what I call the San Antonio Austin corridor? You got two anchors. You got Austin Energy, which is an anchor in public power and very much has a very deep connection to its owner, the city of Austin. And then you have us. We are, we, we are in every aspect of the energy paradigm. Um, plus, we have to think about it in terms of customer expectation and customer relationship. And then there's public power all up and down the corridor. Uh, they are our partners. We have been serving them and working with them the whole time. What if you could take smart city and make it a smart corridor or a smart region? It's not that, that, that you know, but it doesn't have to be, it's, it's not about control or exact um, replication so it's cookie cutter and and rigid, mm -hmm. but it's actually organic. The ability, again, for us to share technology and ideas in a much more fluid way, and then turn that into new solutions for customers in one of the fastest growing regions of the nation. Um, so that completely energizes me. Um, I have been like whispering in your ear for a couple of years arm, about regionalism. And the connection for, between all of the things that we're doing, and um, it, I think I think it's it's to the point where you're like she keeps she won't let this thing go. Um, I won't because it's the beginning. That's great. And 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 I'll just I'll just um, say this that the industry again is evolving. So why not why not think about it in terms of what it could be in spite of certainty about this is the way it's always worked, right? This is the way that we're gonna be able to be creative, um, have real conversations about real solutions, apply them, the conversation about applying them mm -hmm. in little ways. If you, can, if you can apply a solution on both ends of the corridor, test it down the corridor, use design thinking, and really build something that you know works in the region, 
How powerful is that? Right. So um, that's what I think. I think going forward, um, we're going to have this opportunity to build regionalism yeah. across the industry in a in a friendly place that really believes in solution activity. That's that's what my, I'm thinking in, in the future. Thank you very much. I think that's a great way to end and gives us at the Z Prime and ETS team some, some forward-looking stuff, kind of tying into what Christine started off talking about, the, the first of the day of what's next. Yes. Regionalism, the opportunity there. Can't thank you enough for your time. Sorry we didn't have much time for can, questions. Can I do my video real quick, though? Yes. Oh, okay. oh we're going to play that after the ceremony. After the ceremony. Yes. Okay. Yes. I want to do a video because I want to, uh, and th this will cut the, the time from up. The reason why the video is important, it is, um, aspect of one of our major customers in San Antonio, um, Morgan's Wonderland, uh, it had, was started by Gordon Hartman, and it is a community of inclusion. And um, his daughter has been um, challenged in many, many ways uh, about in, in life. Medically, um, she's had uh, uh, disabilities and things like that. And he's always said that. Uh, no matter what, she's going to be this wonderful, spirited person, um, but she will have challenges. And, and she's, she's a beautiful young lady, six foot tall, um, great spirit, but she didn't have a way to have people really connect with her. So he built this wonderful place called Morgan's Wonderland. But as we got to know our customer more and more, and you know, we were always in admiration of him, um, we helped in terms of telling the story of Morgan's, and we did it through the concept of powering dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, when we think about um, all of San Antonio for 157 years, we've been powering dreams. And um, he, he tells this beautiful story through his daughter's eyes and concepts. But I would tell you, our industry has the ability to power dreams across the globe. And so what you see today is where we're at, but I think the, the wonderful stories that we're gonna tell in the future are, are awesome. So. Now I don't have to say it at the very end, but that, that's, that's what I'm going to want you to see on the, before you walk out the door today. So, okay. Well, that sounds good. So now we are uh, get to transition so I, to what I think a lot of you are here for. Christine, you want to quick, quick photo? Yes, thank you so much.